It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. It is great to be with you today. Y'all, today we're having some fun. We're having fun today because we're listening to some tunes. Gotta have tunes, y'all. Um, I am not doing a reaction video, as it were, because I know this song very well, but I want to collaboratively listen to this song with you and uh, share with you a couple of reasons why I think the song really works and uh, just some elements about it that I think are very interesting. The song that we are talking about is called The Raven That Refused to Sing, and it is by Stephen Wilson. Now, it may surprise some of you that uh, as a classical composer, I find myself a lot of times <laughs> listening to progressive rock. Progressive rock is cool, y'all. Uh, you're missing out if you're not listening to it. Uh, I, I like pop music. Uh, it speaks to modern day life, right? That's what pop music does. But progressive rock, I find to be just much more sonically interesting you're more likely to find more intricate uh, chord structures, uh, uh, instrumental voicings, um, meter changes, tempo changes, uh, really interesting instrumentation, and uh, a lot of times the visuals that are planned to go along with the sounds. And uh, I love me some progressive rock, y'all. So, uh, but I didn't know who Stephen Wilson was until it was uh, August of 2017. So I was in Florida visiting my mom, and my brother also happened to be there. And it was, it was a great time together. And, you know, I am the, the music content creator of the family. My brother is the connoisseur of music. If you need an amateur DJ for your event, call my brother, y'all. He's got the tunes. <laughs> Uh, my brother uh, loves any and all music, and there's never any telling what's going to happen when he says, I want to put some music in the, on the car stereo. So that's what, this is what happened. We're driving along in Clearwater Beach, and he says, I've got a tune for you that you need to hear, and I have no idea what's coming. And he puts this song on, and from the very beginning, I was like, ooh, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. And, and this little song kept my attention, and I was just hooked from the very beginning. In fact, when we listened to it the first time, the first thing I wanted to do was listen to it again, because I needed to hear what that was again immediately. Um, I've grown to really love Stephen Wilson's work uh, from his original band, uh, Porcupine Tree. They've got a really great... Uh, catalog of music and from his own solo work he's got some really interesting stuff out there um, but in my mind his his greatest skill is in mixing and mastering recordings he makes these recordings sound unbelievable they're intimate and sort of atmospheric at the same time his music sounds great and and he's worked with uh, a lot of other bands as a record producer and engineer. Uh, he's worked with Opeth, he's worked with Fish, uh, Tears for Fears, uh, Jethro Tull, uh, Yes, uh, he has worked with. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong when, when a, a genius like this gets a lot of his inspiration from the prog rock uh, bands of the 70s, especially somebody like Pink Floyd, right? Uh, you know, give a, a 21st century uh, take on on Pink Floyd's approach to musical aesthetic. It's it's really interesting. So we're going to listen to The, the Raven That Refused to Sing, and it's the last song of this album that was put out in 2013. And uh, we're going to go to this video, which is on YouTube, but uh, we're going to watch along right here. And I'll try not to talk too much, because this is really fascinating stuff. Check it out. He's got this chord cluster at the beginning, and you don't know quite where he's going to go, but it's mixed so well. And then this odd chord progression starts in. It 
it's a 3-4 bar plus a 4-4 four, four bar. Interesting progression. It's A flat. A flat. A, F, C. Interesting progression. And sometimes he lands on C minor and sometimes he lands on C major. Make me whole. And you hear that sustained pitch? That's the C, because that's how this piece is, is created. Um, it's centric around C. There's a C in every chord. It never goes away, the entire piece. Sister, I lost you But you were still a child But I need you now It's almost like a clock ticking up from a light. It tips a little faster than a clock I'm afraid to wait I'm afraid to love. So it's like he's caught between lament and hopeful. This is a great little bridge section. doing there he's still in C but he dropped he, the first thing he did was he dropped down to a B flat chord and you get this sort of expansion away from C and uh, it all it actually looks like uh, like this uh, here with this uh, he starts from this B flat chord down to the da then ya da boom boom right uh, and you but you still get these C's in every chord. Then the second phrase of that is he turns the F to minor. Boom, boom, da, da, bum. I'll just do that F. Except he does the octave lower. I <laughs> don't quite have that note. Right? But it's an interesting way. You'll notice that there's just the one little G chord here. Uh, and it's just a passing G minor sus chord. Uh, there is never... Uh, if this piece is actually in C, if it's centric around C, you never get a dominant chord in the entire piece. This is the opening uh, here. This you see, a, you get this neat uh, progression with the flat, uh, the E flat to the E natural to the F, and then back down to the E flat. Um, sounds like. It's three four plus four four. You never get a G chord. Or you never get a tonicizing chord. Um, yeah, that's what this next piece part sounds like. Then he changes it F minor seven, then A minor over E. So, and that's the, and that's this next hopeful bit that you're gonna get to. You're gonna love this. You're gonna absolutely love this, y'all. So let's keep listening. Just because I'm weak. Steal my dreams. You can reach inside my head. You can. 
Put your son there instead Please Come to me Please Stay with me Please Help him down, he's building up and he's building up this looks like um, down here you get this um, sing to me Lily spot is over the top of this of this uh, progression and, and then the next phrase happens um, sounds a little bit like this Basic chords, but that lowered B flat adds a lot of uh, expansiveness to it, and the fact that it's resolving down also has a lament factor to it. But it's this, it's this E that's set against that B flat at the very beginning. It's a Lydian fourth above that B flat, and it's. And then it lifts all the way up to that high C above the F chord. And it's just a really hopeful motive amid, amid all of this angst and um, unsured uh, quality uh, of, you know, around this situation. And he uses this to great effect as we finish out this tune. You're going to love this. Finally lets her go. And it's 
by the choir. I think he can finally be at peace now. You know, but it's such, such a cool tune, right? I love his music. Uh, Drive Home, we, we might do that one too if you guys like this one uh, and you like this sort of commentary. Um, this is a song that I come back to now and again when I just want to be uplifted from a place of, of angst and sort of negativity and then just allow the process to happen where I'm sort of liberated from that and gain a little bit of peace. And it's through uh, like intentional dealing with and recognizing uh, what's causing the strife. So uh, that's how art can uplift us and can help us through our day. And uh, I enjoyed sharing it with you and uh, I might just watch it again <laughs> after we're done here. But, uh, you know, that was fun. Uh, we might do more of these. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, who, you never know what I'm going to end up talking about, so you better stay tuned for the next edition of The Daily Doug.